All right, today I'm going to talk about the Cuddy Link system from Cuddy Back. And uh, it's sub zero temperatures outside, hence the reason I'm doing this in the office, but we'll make it work. Uh, the Cuddy Link system, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's not a cell system. It's a, it's a technology where it creates its own Wi Fi network and all the cameras send the images to a home camera. So uh, all the Cuddy Link cameras can be set to either home or remote. You don't have to buy separate cameras for that. It's just setting within the camera. Um, and I think, according to Cuddy Back, I think you can uh, put up to 16 cameras on one Cuddy Link network. Um, but it's a really good system for a couple reasons, but the main one is cutting down on the intrusion. This system allows you to deploy these remote cameras into a lot more sensitive areas, back in bedding areas, deep in cover, you know, spots where you obviously wouldn't put a camera normally. If you're going in there and checking every week or you know, two weeks, whatever it is, you're, you're applying a lot of pressure to those cameras. So you always you know, are, are hesitant about where you can put them. You gotta put them where they're accessible. Well, now with this, you just need to make sure the home camera is accessible. Uh, the rest of them can be deployed in uh, very remote, sensitive spots, and you don't have to worry about blowing deer out when you're checking those cameras because the images are getting sent to the home camera. So that brings me to the first point. This video, I'm just going to talk about how I've set it up and, and from a high-level standpoint, how it works for me. I'll get into more specific details on settings and stuff in a different video. Um, but when setting up the home camera, like I said, take advantage of the fact of how the system works. This is the one camera that you have to have uh, set up in an accessible spot. So whether that's the, the gate entrance to the farm or a logging road or um, you know just somewhere you can access with the truck or a UTV pretty easily. Uh, somewhere where you could basically check this camera every day and not do any damage. Uh, this is where your, all your images are gonna be. So make sure you can access this one uh, as easily as possible and as often as you want. I won't go through camera settings, but once you have the home camera armed and live and set up where you want it, I take the next remote camera and I stand next to the home camera and I program it and I get to the screen that shows me the Cuddy Link level. And the reason I do this, and, and in theory, when you're standing next to the home camera, it should say 99 good on it because that'll be the highest signal you possibly have. The reason I do this is it allows me to watch that real-time signal go down the farther I move away from this camera. So, you know, whether I'm driving it on a UTV or walking it somewhere, I can watch it and know when I need to stop and put up that camera. I don't really like to go down below 20. I always want to make sure that signal is not going to cut out on me and I'm going to have enough signal to transmit the images back to the home camera. So, I'm going to walk away with that remote camera displaying the signal and you'll know when to stop that distance. That distance really varies depending on a few things, terrain and cover. So there's not really a blanket answer on how far away you can get. I usually have a general idea of where I wanna be, but I let that signal dictate the exact spot that I set up that next remote camera. And this is the way I set up all of them. So once I set up that first remote camera, I do the same thing. I take the next remote camera, I stand next to that remote, that first remote camera, and I get the signal and I start walking away from there. So. The nice thing about this system is it daisy chains. You, do, you don't have to have every single camera in range of the home camera. It just has to be in range of another camera. So it can daisy chain uh, transmitting those images back to the home camera. So deploy all your, all your cameras in, in that matter. One thing on, real quick on the, on the settings of the remote camera, one thing I learned is the system is set up to transmit the first photo of each series. So if you have, let's say, a three photo burst set up where the camera takes three photos and then has a, a period of delay, it's only gonna send you that first image. So if it's A, B, and C, it's only gonna transmit A back to the home camera. You know, A, B, and C are all gonna be stored locally on that, on that card, but as far as transmitting, it's only gonna send the first image of the series. So to somewhat combat that, I like to set those remote cameras as one photo bursts but the delay to be FAP, fast as possible. You know, what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to get almost all the images transmitted and I'm not gonna have to worry about missing something. When I first started setting it up, I, I you know, did like normal, I did those three photo bursts, A, B, and C, 
And I always would wonder what I miss on B and C. I have to actually go to that camera, that physical camera to find out because it wasn't on the home camera. Well, now I get almost all the images sent to the home camera. I'm not worried about what I'm missing. I guess the only downside to that would be it's gonna take a lot of images. If a deer's just standing there in front of the camera, it's gonna keep taking pictures almost as fast as possible. And um, you know, you're just gonna get a lot more images than normal, but at least you don't have to worry about missing anything. At least uh, almost all those images are gonna get transmitted back to the home camera. So uh, those are just a couple of things on, on how I like to set it up. You know, again, use this to your advantage. Don't be afraid to set those cameras up in very remote locations. You'll be surprised at <clears throat> the amount of activity that you see different than how you typically get them. You know, when you're checking cameras on a very regular basis, every week to two weeks, deer start to pattern that. They start to avoid those areas and you don't get that very natural activity. You, get a, you see a decrease in uh, the amount of daylight activity you see too. So having these, these remote cameras deployed in uh, deep embedding areas that you're com leaving completely untouched, you're gonna see a whole lot more activity on those cameras. And again, you're gonna keep getting those pictures sent to the outside, sent to your home camera. So if you can think of a situation where you hunt, where this would be beneficial, give the Cuddy Link system a try. Uh, again, it's not a cell system where you have to pay month to month for data or anything. It's a, it creates its own Wi-Fi network out in the field. And for me, it's just opened up a lot more possibilities of where I can put trail cameras, you know, deeper in the cover, uh, places where deer spend more time, where they move more in daylight. Uh, I've used it for a couple of years now, and I've, I've learned a lot more about how deer use certain properties based on this system. So um, I'll go into further detail once the weather warms up and I can get out onto one of the farms and show you specifically how I have it set up and, and placement. But this is a high level overview of what I like about the system and, and how it's worked for me.